Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So today I thought I'd share with you my very long list of gap year travel plan tips. So the first thing that I would recommend that you look into are credit cards, not just because it's really good to start building up your credit score, which you can then um, link to your debit card so your debit card pays it off automatically so you don't have any withstanding payments, but also because they often come with insurance which you can then use for travel and flights. So if your flight's delayed, you can often claim back using your credit card um, or if they're cancelled. And and similarly they often have medical insurance attached to them so if you have an emergency accident while you're out somewhere then often your insurance companies can help claim back some money via your credit card. Also there are some flights which only allow you to use credit cards to buy your flights. Um, I don't actually have a credit card, I have a special debit card which is used for travellers so basically it has a really good exchange rate transfer for me so if I spend money abroad then I get quite a good deal. As well as that it comes with car insurance, medical insurance, phone insurance and travel insurance which I did use when I was travelling abroad and had my skiing accident a couple of months ago. <laughs> now onto visa so this is quite a big thing for traveling. Fortunately at the moment we are still in the EU so for English and British and European citizens that's no problem unless if you go somewhere else. With Cambodia and Laos you can get your visas when you arrive and they're generally around 10 to 25 pounds um, but with Vietnam uh, because we're only staying under 15 days it means that we can get in for free um, so you just make sure that you're checking because I think that does change after June 30th or something like that. With our Indian visa we'd either have to go to the Indian Embassy up in London but we decided to do an e-visa which was super quick. You basically just fill in a form online, um, they ask a lot of questions but it takes maybe like half an hour to an hour and then you get it back within three days I'd say and there you go, you have a visa. I have already done a video on how I travel cheaply which had a lot of the apps which I use in there so I'll link that down below but a few more apps I thought I'd speak about. So I did speak about Skyscanner and Google Trips but Hostel World is definitely one that we're using a lot more now we're going around Southeast Asia because you can basically book your hostels as you go around and as well as that they have reviews so you can check if they're nice or not because a lot of the places around Southeast Asia either don't have windows or they're a little bit unsafe or maybe the bed linen hasn't been changed or there are bed bugs so you just got to be careful where you stay and so Hostel World is really good for getting good deals as you go around and making sure they're nice-ish. Of course TripAdvisor is super useful but I've put down here whatever airlines you're flying with they often have apps. I've downloaded mine onto my phone because then you can check in. Sometimes they only allow you to check in 48 hours before your flight so if you're leaving your home like a month before you can't check in so making sure that you do it on the road to save you time at the airport is always really good. Then you can also see if your flight's been delayed. Another app which I've downloaded is Uber for Mumbai because Mumbai they tend to use Ubers quite a lot there and they're really cheap, cheaper than the actual taxis around the town. It's worthwhile checking if there's Uber in the place that you're staying and if it's quite reliable. I've never used Uber in the UK but in Mumbai it'll definitely be an experience. Then on to injections, I would definitely advise going to your local GP and checking what you need. I have to admit some of them are really expensive, for example I needed rabies, they're £55 a shot and I had to get three of those so that came to like 160 70 pounds I don't even really want to think about it but it doesn't matter it's for my safety I also got typhoid and hepatitis and all that but that was free because I went to my local GP so yeah! another tip when you're backpacking or traveling around the world is just to pack light there is uh, an art to it but it's definitely one that I would uh, spend time learning because you're going to save a lot of money not having to always check in your bags and as well as that you can buy clothes while you're there and generally they're a lot cheaper especially if you're going to Asia you can pick up a beautiful outfit for under £10 it's amazing also it's quite nice as a memento to bring back some clothes plus while you're out there you might look more like a local therefore you're less likely to be robbed because you look less like a really rich tourist I did briefly mention insurance earlier but I'd just like to reiterate how important it is it's only three or four pounds and if you've got a really expensive £500 camera on you and you lose it you can at least claim some of it back with a bit of an excess say if it's an excess of 50 that basically means you pay £50 and then they'll pay you the rest and even if you don't claim your insurance then you get a no claims bonus so the next time you get insurance because you haven't claimed it should actually be cheaper or at least the same price. Groupon 
in my opinion is a bit of a scam I've never heard one person who's had a good first-hand experience from it uh, so I wouldn't trust it but that doesn't mean you can't take inspiration from holiday packages and websites like STA STA travel also has a really good app but they're mainly known for their tours around the world so they have South American tours Asia tours and we kind of copied their Asia tour but they were gonna charge us I think it was like three thousand pounds five thousand pounds and that was just for the flights when we did it for ourselves easily under a grand I think it was um, so we saved a lot of money we basically just used the stops that they did and kind of copied their itinerary so we know what we want to see at what places and then we added in a few bits or like got rid of some things which we thought we wouldn't really enjoy but doing research like that basically gave us an idea of what was most time efficient and also a lot of those um, holiday things aren't very flexible so you can either leave Saturday to Saturday or that's it so if you want to make it more personalised to you then I would definitely advise just booking the holidays and booking your trips yourself. Then on to a few items that I'm definitely bringing with me while travelling and the first one is my bum bag so I have a little bit of a fanny pack. Um, I was looking at old photos of my dad when he went travelling around Australia and America when he was 20 and it's so weird to see him with like a bum bag and then I've got one now but in it I am 100% keeping my tiger balm so this is super useful for mosquito bites keeping them away Asian kids might know this as the cream that their parents rub on their temples if they've got a headache or rubbing it on their tummy when they've got a tummy ache this stuff kind of heals everything this is the bum bag that I'm taking with me you might remember it from a previous unboxing video and it's from a patchy it's really good because it has lots of pockets and it's also really nice and velvety it's good quality it can fit my purse my phone and my cameras in here which is the most important thing and my passport and all of my security stuff with me also with me I'm bringing lots of passport photos because you'll need them for when you check into your hostels also for your visas upon arrival they will need the photos there so just making sure that you've got a lot of them spare I'm also traveling with one of my gap year friends so inside my bum bag I will also have her emergency contacts for her phone um, and her like bank account her family stuff just in case of an emergency something that's quite useful is to travel with an extension cable because you might only have one plug and if you're needing to charge your phone your camera your laptop your mosquito repellent stuff you're gonna need more than one plug so if you travel with with an extension cable you can plug loads of things in but just make sure that you have the right voltage you don't want to blow things up just check that beforehand and finally probably the coolest travel gadget I have is my Scross portable travel adapter so this can go to like 150 countries in the world as well as that it's got two USB ports at the top so you can charge your phones from there and then it's got the UK thing here so I can charge something a bit more powerful like my camera batteries if you're going from country to country then this has all of it so you don't need loads of travel adapters and it will save you so much space and plus it's just really cool to use I am thinking of doing a video of what I'm packing when I go to Southeast Asia if that would be useful for you um, if it would be then give the video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below I really hope you enjoyed the video and subscribe for weekly videos every Thursday and I'll see you next week have a lovely day bye